Hello and welcome back to the University of Georgia Sailing Channel. My name is Allison and today we are talking about starting strategies. Four strategies we're going to be covering today are parking on the line, stealing holes or shark starting, dip starting, and how to port tack the fleet. So the act of parking is holding your boat's position steady on a starting line. You'll often see boats line up in this fashion with their boats pointing off toward the port side of the course so that when they're ready to go they're pulling in their sails and crossing the starting line on a starboard tack. Something you want to take into consideration with this strategy is having a hole to leeward of you. So in this situation right here, this boat would be in the best position to start because they have open space between them and the next boat that allows them to bear off and gain speed and then cross the starting line. These boats over here have boats directly to leeward of them, so the boat below them is preventing them from heading down and getting speed to go up. So as the boats are getting ready to go, they're going, this boat right here that's in the best starting position is going to take this kind of a path. They're going to come down a little ways, kind of in the last five to ten seconds of the starting sequence. So they're going to come down here and gain speed and then they're going to shoot up and they're going to wind up being kind of right on top of the boat that's a little ways off to leeward of them, um, but this space in between this boat and that boat is what's most important is that you have that runway to get your speed before you cross the starting line. So this boat right here does not have that flexibility and is not able to bear down and get speed. This boat is going to be blocking them. The other thing you want to keep an eye out for is the current and how that's going to affect your parking. So if your current is coming from the same direction as the wind, that's going to bring all the boats down to a line sag right here. And you'll want to set up parking a lot higher than you think you would because the current will push you down. And Vice versa, if the current is coming from behind, there's a line bulge and you'll want to set up much further down than you expect because it will push you above the line. Same thing for any other angle, this, this will push boats down this way so you'll want to set up more to this way and just account for how the current's going to push you while you're sitting still. Getting good at parking is a really difficult skill to master but the best way to practice this is to sail up to a stationary object, whether it's a, a shoal marker or a buoy that you set in the water, and just put your boat head to wind as close to that stationary point as you can and practice staying in that position as long as you can. This next strategy works really well when you have a lot of people in the fleet who are parking on the line and really clogging things up. I've coined the term shark start because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to stalk the fleet from below and then steal a hole at the last second. So I'll show you how to do that. It's, it's very rare that you're going to have a bunch of people who are excellent at parking. So things are going to be shifting and moving around all the time and people are going to be getting closer or farther away and the holes are going to be coming and going left and right. So what you can do is hang out kind of in this area over here and then as it nears go you have to time this pretty well. So this, this is where you're waiting and then you can bear off and come down here, come below everyone, sail behind them and then they're all getting ready to cross the starting line but then you see a hole that opens up and you take this person's advantage of a leeward runway right there and you can steal that hole and shoot up at full speed because this is your bearing down right here that allows you to get speed and shoot up in that hole. The thing you want to watch out for with this is that there has to be enough wind. It has to be kind of the, the higher end of medium wind or heavy wind because all of these boats that are parked on the line right here are making a wall that's preventing the wind from getting to you. So if there isn't enough wind to get through all of these boats that are parked in front of you, then you're just going to get stuck back here and you'll get a second, third row start. And what I mean by that is one boat length off the line is the first row, and then you have the second row and the third row, and it goes on forever, but the first row is what we aim for. This next strategy is called the dip start and is also used when you have a lot of people who are attempting to park on the line. So go watch our other video on line sites because that will be really important for getting your bearings for setting up this strategy. So what happens is the boats on the ends of the line will be closer to the line but the ones in the middle are going to sag down a little bit because they're a little unsure of where the line actually is. So what you can do is you can again hang out in this area over here except it's going to be a little to windward of the race committee boat. And then as you're near and go you'll also have to time this pretty well. You come in from this angle and you come above the line, you come from above, but the rulebook states that you must be on the pre-start side of the course before go and at go. Um, so all you have to do is just make sure that you get below the start and then they can call go right here and then you just 
turn back up and go right there and you are automatically on top of everyone. Also be aware of current if you're sailing in an area that has current. If the current is coming in the same direction of the wind, this line side will be much more exaggerated and if the current is coming in the opposite direction, there probably won't be too much of a line side if nothing at all. Uh, people will be fighting to get below the line because they're being pushed across. This last starting strategy is a checklist and a process that I've developed over my, my years of sailing. So you know from our other video on basic right-of-way rules that starboard has right-of-way over port and port must yield to starboard. So that's why boats will start on the starboard tack. But in some cases, the wind isn't perfectly perpendicular to the starting line like this, and it'll be off to one side or the other. And in which case, the port tack might be favored more than the starboard tack. If the wind is off to the left from center, this will mean that the port tack is favored for the start. But sometimes it's a little difficult to recognize that. So I'm gonna show you how I figure out when the wind is off to the left. As soon as the race committee blows the whistle for three minutes, I am immediately checking my angles. So I'll be kind of close to the committee boat off to the side so that I can hear them communicating on when they're gonna start the starting sequence. And then as soon as they do, I peel off down here and I round the race committee boat as if it were a leeward mark, but from the other direction. And I go off on a close haul tack and see how close I can get to the wind. And I'm looking around me and I'm observing this angle right here. So the direction, if I were to draw a straight line off from where I'm sailing and then measure that angle to the line, that's kind of what I'm taking a mental picture of. And then I'll come off down here and do the same thing and I'll round the pin like it's a leeward mark and go off in that direction, close all as high as I can go, and then look at that straight line and check out this angle right here. And if both angles are relatively even, then I know that the wind is pretty centered and I don't have to adjust anything and I should probably start on starboard tack because I'm gonna get eaten alive if I start on port. But if the port tack angle happens to be significantly larger than the starboard tack angle, that's when I know that the wind has shifted off to the left and that the port tack is now favored for the start. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, this is a pretty extreme example, but I wanted to exaggerate it to show you what I'm talking about. Um, if this is the highest that the starboard tack boat can point, it's gonna be pretty easy to get away with a port tack start right here. And what will usually happen is if you're this boat right here and everyone else is starting on starboard like this, they'll see you and go, oh, that was a better idea, and then they'll immediately tack over onto port, and then you're on top of them, and all is well in the world. But just checking your angles and recognizing which tack is favored doesn't always work out. Next thing you have to do is observe the trends of the fleet that you're competing in. So in order for your port tack start to go successfully, you'll need a bit of a runway to operate with. So what you want to be looking for in the trends is if people are just packed on the starting line and are all parking and clogging it up, then you're not going to be able to successfully port tack the fleet because all these boats will be in your way. But if everyone seems to be starting on the starboard side of the line and if they're starting at the boat, then you have a pretty good shot if your angles are favorable to do a port tack start because you have time to get in front of them. Having the, the extra runway right here is also good if you happen to have misjudged your angles and you thought you could get in front of this boat but you can't and now you need to tack off, now you have time to do that safely and you didn't mess up your start too poorly. In order to start noticing these trends, you'll have to collect a little bit of data, so you'll have to wait about three races into the regatta to see what people's tendencies are. Um, a lot of people have been trained to start on starboard tack at the boat, and so there's a good chance that this will happen, um, but as you get to more advanced regattas, people will be using more of these strategies and it'll be a little bit harder to pull this. So, about three races into the regatta, then you'll kind of know what everyone's favorite kind of start is and where where you can find them at the next starting sequence and if this will work for you or if you should steer clear of it. So the next thing after you've figured all this out, after you are observing people's starting strategies and you realize that they have a tendency to do one thing over the other um, and that your angles are favoring a port tax start, the next thing you want to do is to not give away your plan. So oftentimes what you'll see people do who are getting ready to port tack the fleet is they'll hang around over here and everyone else is over here waiting to go and then you have someone who looks down and sees this boat over here and they say, wait a minute, they're about to port tack the fleet. So then they come down and they park right here which just kills your plan because you can't have anyone right there if you're gonna do this successfully. So what you wanna do is hang out with your friends over here and then when they all start advancing toward the line and getting ready to set up here, 
that's when you can come over here and you really don't have to hang out here long at all because you just need to get that tight grounding on the pin to get the highest angle that you can in the longest runway possible. And that will set you up for a vortex start. So the way this is beneficial is if you get on top of everyone else and they're all coming on starboard attack in this direction, as soon as you get on top of the highest boat, you can tack over and then you are automatically controlling the fleet. What that means is the entire fleet is underneath you and you are in a great position to win if you don't mess anything up. So when you see a bunch of them tack over, that's when you tack over. And then if a bunch of them tack back, that's when you tack back and you're just always on top of them and you're guaranteed to be the first one to the mark. And my final piece of advice for port tacking the fleet is to have confidence in what you've decided. Hold your ground, but also know when to get out of there if you are in a bad situation and you need to bail out. There are a lot of things to consider with this strategy, but just go for it and start practicing and this will be a really cool tool to have in your belt. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions that I can answer for you. Please give us a like if you liked it or subscribe if you'd like to subscribe. Um, <laughs> you can do that with this button right here. And check out our other videos over here. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.